Hello, Metanoia Marathoners. Thank you for joining us today for another segment of Metanoia Marathoners. Today, we have Grace Cowan with us, and she is our next interview. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's get into these questions. First of all, I just want you guys to excuse my voice. I recently celebrated my brother getting married, so it was a loud celebration. Therefore, my voice is not here with me today. Um, but our first question is, metanoia means a transformation of heart and mind. Where have you seen that transformation within yourself or within the communities that we serve? Uh, that's a big question, Alexandria. Um, there is so much about metanoia that that touches every piece of my soul. I I feel like the first time I met Bill several years ago and the whole team working there, um, just the interaction with the community, the foundation of the community that's there, and the vision of what it is transforming into. Um, you know, the empowerment of the people through their neighborhood that live there. And really that it's a, it's a formula or, or a, an outlook on community that can be um, taken into other places and really um, to change how communities thrive. And what about metanoia or metanoia's work uh, helped you to decide to invest in our programs and the work that we do? Um, I think there were a few things, uh, you know, the, the biggest piece was really just what I remember about my connection to my neighborhood as a kid. And I did not grow up in a, a fancy neighborhood. I did not grow up in a, a place that probably a lot of people, um, looking in would say was, was safe maybe, um, but I didn't ever feel unsafe there. And I took great pride in the neighborhood that I grew up in. I, I knew um, there was a bakery on the corner and I knew that on Fridays we would go in and get free cookies. I knew um, you know, the ladies that were the waitresses at the little diner down the street. I knew that I could be on my bike and ride with my friends um, until it got dark. and that all the neighbors knew who I was. And if I wrecked my bike, somebody would come out and give me a Band-Aid. Um, and so I, I think from, for, the, for, for me, when I see metanoia, that's what I envision. And that's what I feel like um, that community is, that they're, the people there are looking out for each other and they all have sort of this vision for what their neighborhood is, is, is on its way to being. Um, I think the second piece was the old Shakura. I mean, you walk into that building and you can envision with a little bit of imagination, kids running around and adults going to concerts that are neighborhood concerts in that beautiful theater. I, I mean, I just, I feel like there is a community feel that is tangibly in place right now and you know is being created um literally from the ground up and the people that live there see it and want it and are all working in tandem to make that happen and so i i i really feel like um it, it's such an inspiration uh, the people build the community there um and i, I do see that it will be able to, to be replicated. And I think that that's an amazing thing. Community is so important. Yeah, definitely. I can definitely hear all of the community and that family and familiarity aspect of, you know, you talking about your childhood and you were saying, you know, that my community might've been defined as this, but from my own eyes, it was a beautiful place where I knew the person around the corner. And I think that um, is an amazing Thing that we see within uh, the community that Metanoia works with and serves because you speaking about what you see in your community is the same thing you know I believe the residents feel when they look down the street and they know this person's there or they recognize you know the person that owns this building and I think it's interesting to think about how people outside of a community might define a community they may not understand or have themselves been in, which I think is a beautiful thing about metanoia because 
Bill and Evelyn immersed themselves and became a part of and not even included the community in their work, but they were they included themselves in the community's work and just provided um, or, or created opportunities um, that may not have been available before. And so, yeah, I love I love your story about community and and the people, the people that make the community. That sense of community is so important. It's more than the buildings in the neighborhood, but it really starts with the people, which I heard definitely so much in your story. And um, our final question. Oh. I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you going to go ahead and say something? No, I'm done. I'm, I feel like I'm on the $25,000 question game. <laughs> What's coming next, Alexandria? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, and the final question, your final question. <laughs> Do I win the money? <laughs> yeah. uh, give us one fun fact about yourself. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, you know, I, I, I think this is the toughest question. I guess this is why this is the big, big question. Um, so before I, I currently work, I run a nonprofit and I, I as, am a guardian ad litem and I am a mom, a full-time mom. Um, but prior to that, I was a concert promoter. And wow. so I, toured around with bands and um, put on concerts all over. And in my prior life, when people would say, you know, oh, what do you do for work? And I would say, I'm a concert promoter. The reaction would be, oh my God, tell me more. What artists do you know? What bands do you know? What crazy stories can you tell me? Right. Um, and now in act two of this life of Grace Cowan, when people say, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a mom. They're like, oh. Great, that's really interesting. So, so there, that's my that's my fun fact is that um, now I'm and I used to be woo. <laughs> I love it. I love there it. Um, when you got on camera and I was asking you how you were doing, and you were like, "Oh, well, I'm a soccer mom now, and I go to practice volleyball, volleyball, volleyball. Yeah. Uh, bad interview skills, <laughs> volleyball mom, and I go to practice and I watch the games, but I think." moms and you know going to the games and doing all that stuff is really can really be just as exciting and whatever as as anything else that anyone does but I think it's funny how you said how the reactions are just so different um I used to be an early doctor for my minivan. Huh? everybody used to be the tour bus nobody's impressed with my minivan <laughs> I'm impressed I used to be an early child here for eight years and I was, I was like, you know, zero years old up to five years old with the kids. And I could give them back to their parents at the end of the day. And I'm like, you moms and you dads, you guys got it. <laughs> it, is, it is a lot. So, so you've taken care of um, rock stars and yeah, rock stars and performers. And now you're taking and they're the care same of thing. <laughs> Very similar creatures. Right. Well, I salute you. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was an amazing interview. I really enjoyed myself. I hope you did as well. I did. Thank you for having me. All right. And to all of our viewers, thank you for watching and tune in next time for the next episode of Merit Metanoia Marathoner. <laughs> Bye.